Today we're covering Civil War 101, The Basics. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and to, uh, take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, I'd love to see your answer to question number five in the comments below. So today we're just hitting the basics of the American Civil War. Each year when I teach the Civil War, I always have students who, you know, they've studied the Civil War in the past or they've heard of the Civil War before, but they just don't quite understand some of the, the basics of the war. So today I'm not really covering, you know, why the Civil War happened. Um, if you want to know that, you know, take a look at some of my other videos about sectionalism or about Western expansion. But today I'm really just going to hit, you know, a few things that, you know, a lot of students seem to have questions about when we get to the Civil War. So first off, the, the United States itself at the time of the Civil War, um, there was a total population of around 31 million people, with 22 million people living in northern states and 9 million people living in southern states. But it's important to note, of that 9 million people, 4 million were enslaved people. So the North, otherwise called the Union, consisted of 20 states with five border states of Missouri, Kentucky, West Virginia, which of course broke away from Virginia during the Civil War, Maryland, and Delaware. Now these border states, these were states that still had slavery and didn't vote for Lincoln in the election of 1860, yet they never officially seceded from the Union. So that doesn't mean they exclusively supported the Union because there were men from these states that fought for the Union, but there were also men from these states who fought for the Confederate. So the South, or the Confederacy, or the Confederate States of America, um, was made up of 11 states, and they believed themselves to be a new country separate from the United States of America. So the Union flag should be very familiar, since uh, this is basically still the standard stars and stripes that we think of today as being our national flag. But it's important to note, in the Union flag, they never removed stars for states that seceded, because they never officially recognized southern states as seceded from the Union. So, um, during the, the war... Um, the flag went through several different changes. There were actually 33 stars on the flag when the war began at Fort Sumner, but then there were 34 added when Kansas was admitted, um, there were 35 when West Virginia was admitted, and then finally in 1865 there's 36 stars on the flag when Nevada was admitted. Now for the Confederacy, of course, we have this very recognizable Confederate battle flag, or the Army of Northern Virginia battle flag. Um, this flag was not the official flag of the Confederacy um, originally, although it does appear later on their national flag. The original national flag was the stars and bars seen here. The problem with the stars and bars was that it was very similar to the Union flag. And so on the battlefield, commanders depended on seeing these flags to know where their troops were at during the battle. And it got really confusing when you would see two red, white, and blue flags on the battlefield. So the Confederates adopted this flag to carry into battle. Later in the war, the Confederates did change their national flag to include the battle flag uh, in their design. The Union uniform was, of course, the blue, or the dark navy blue, with, with lighter blue pants. Um, this uniform had officially been adopted by the United States in 1858, but for years, United, U.S. troops had been wearing some form of blue uniform. Um, the idea that, that they were wearing darker colors uh, was that basically they wouldn't stand out at a distance. This was a practice that was used by pre-Civil War hunters. Now, Confederates, of course, they wore gray uniforms. This was primarily because gray dye was pretty cheap to use, and it was also the standard uniform color of a lot of different state militias. Some historians also note that the cadets, or the students at West Point and the Virginia Military Institute, or VMI, the two primary military schools of the time, wore gray uniforms. So although the Union had a means to produce uniforms uh, with their, you know, industries and everything, the Confederates did not have as much industry, so they could not produce as many uniforms. And so a lot of times you'd see Confederates wearing just their standard, you know, clothing that they wore from day to day on the battlefield. But a lot of times they would take blue uniforms from killed or captured Union troops and they would dye them in a solution of walnuts and acorns and lye and turn the uniform to tan. And this became known as the butternut uniform. Now, the theaters of the war, a lot of times you'll hear theaters of the war discussed, and we're not talking about, you know, going to a show or anything. Rather, there's two major goals, or I'm sorry, this focuses on a couple different goals for the Union during the war. So we have the Eastern Theater of the War, which was basically the fight to capture Richmond. And, you know, there's major battles that occur here, such as, you know, Antietam, Chancellorsville, Gettysburg, happen in the Eastern Theater of the War. Then we have the Western Theater of the War, which focused on 
control of the Mississippi River. And so we, you know, we have major conflicts that happen here, such as Shiloh and Vicksburg that happen in the Western theater of the war. So hopefully I cleared up a few things there. Um, maybe I confused you a little bit more about the Civil War. But um, with that, hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.